what's up everyone so today we're replacing the cooler pads on the cooler so if this is your first time doing it after the installation of your cooler we're gonna show you how to get it started so i recommend when using a ladder to make sure it's placed high enough up above the roof so you have adequate uh, mounting and dismounting when messing with anything on your roof make sure you stay away from this because this is the main power coming into your house okay and the way you could tell is because your breaker panel should be right below it or near this area so that's your power your main power so during your off season you should turn off all your water and stuff so your lines don't freeze and that that type of uh accumulation of uh, the water being um, stagnant or actually lifting in the float causing overflow maybe something sticks so you want to make sure you turn off your water so if you already winterized your cooler it's just a reverse process okay but if you haven't winterized your cooler and you left it all year um, this will actually help you understand on how to winterize it and then how to prepare it for the summer so every summer you want to replace your cooler pads the cooler pads are sized based on the width and the height of your panel okay so you go to the cooler store and they'll tell you what size you'll need based on that so when you go and look at it uh, they give you these numbers so it'll give you the size of the cooler and uh, so once you give them the size it'll convert it into a number like this so this is a 173 and that will determine uh, the width and the height of your pad you could fit a little bit larger cooler pad into your cooler if for whatever reason they don't have your certain size uh, i recommend going up a size not down a size just because you don't want any water splashing out you could you know compile this all together like this to make the larger size fit the next size up for me personally i have a tie down here a strap just because i'm on the corner lot and i get high speed winds through here and i don't want this thing blowing off okay so all i do is i have a ratchet strap so i can compress this down and then the stand that it sits on is bolted directly to the roof the plywood of the roof okay so this isn't going to come standard and then all i do is release it here and then i'm able to access the panels when you winterize your cooler uh, setup i don't recommend removing uh, the cooler pads themselves just because they'll help block some air entering your home um, but you should also have um, a pulling slot so this one here in particular is up on the roof some of them are inside your attic and the concept's the same but for this one all you do is take off one screw i recommend doing it if you don't have one on your roof i recommend putting it in uh, having them install one with the stack just because it's a lot more convenient to get to instead of going into your attic uh, so yeah this one has a lip here down here and all that does is it hooks into this upper lip up here hangs down with one screw and then just like you would in your attic there's a slot that gets removed so you just pull on this i need to remove this but you pull on this and the whole slot slides out if you don't have one on top of your roof it'll be the same concept but inside your attic and you'll just pull the slot so this is all you have to do is pull on this slide out this big panel if it's in your attic a lot of times people just pull it straight out and let it hang uh, because of course it's in your attic but it being up on the roof for this one you have to remove it and then replace or uh, reinsert this piece or else uh, your cold air will leak out of here as well so all i did was reinsert it on the top side up here so it's like a hinge push down on it make sure it is seated it makes sure this side goes all the way on the outside and matches the same on this side and then you put your phillips screw uh, screw back in to the slot 
uh, the slot stack here and then you just screw it back in and now you're ready for the summertime and using this for the winter time you want to just reinsert this and then close it back down so no cold air blows through there to remove each panel all you're going to do is you just lift up and pull out on these panels this is what the inside of the cooler looks like as you can see this is a panel that's been removed there's four of them uh you also have another style which is on my neighbor's roof they let theirs go pretty bad it's a circular style right there and all they all that does is it's a circle that gets strapped together and set down and then there's a top plate on the top that covers it and in order to get that off all you do is remove the top plate that whole panel uh circular panel comes off you unbuckle the straps and then it's one continuous flat piece that you remove the pads off of these pads uh the wood um stripped pads smell good when they're first used so i highly recommend these if you get the synthetic ones like the uh, the other style like the honeycomb and stuff like that they don't smell good uh, but they'll do the job these just smell really good uh, when you're using them okay so now that we got that off of course to winterize it just to recap to winterize it all you got to do is you remove your drain plug here so some of them you twist some of them you twist and just lift off some of them you fully twist all the way around because they're fully threaded like this one and it allows the water to leak out uh, down here because you want all the water out so that way you don't have any stagnant water in here for the next year also uh, you want to wash this out what I recommend doing is spraying it with a uh, high pressure water hose and cleaning all this out before you even use it okay don't get any water in here because that goes directly down into your ducting um, but yeah so sometimes these just pull straight out sometimes they're threaded so it depends on the brand that you have on this side you have your cooler pump if for whatever reason you want more water go with the larger uh, water pump here and it'll shoot more water down your pads okay um, you want to make sure all of these are unclogged so when you do fill this up and run it for the first time to check it make sure there's water trickling down these because that's what's going to cool your pads and supply cold air into your house if those are plugged you want to clean them out run a pipe cleaner or something down there compress air blow through it and clean it out also make sure you have a filter bag like this so none of the large debris goes in here and clogs it and then make sure you clean that as well okay so if for whatever reason you're losing power um or your your squirrel cage sounds like it's squeaking it could be that you need a new belt and you need to replace it the numbers could be found on the belt so or it could be found by the manufacturer but you could look and it should tell you the belt size you need also uh, it's recommended to run an amp draw test on here so the way you speed up or slow down your pulley system is by this right here this upper pulley and basically all you got to do is uh, loosen this Allen and then you twist this ring out here that has a taper on it so you screw it in and out in order to adjust your speed just remember if you adjust this uh, to give you more speed it could cause an uh, increase in amp draw and um, your outlet might be only regulated for a certain amount of amps that it could withstand like say 15 amps or because it might trip the breaker so that's why you want to run an amp meter on here which is your direct power and make sure that whatever amp your motor is rated for and your uh, circuit breaker matches up because if you draw too much power by making this speed up 
uh, too fast, you might be blowing a breaker or it might overheat your motor and burn it out, okay? So this is very critical if you don't know how to do that, uh, to have a professional come by and uh, work on that. But if you just need a belt because yours is cracked, all you gotta do is pull on it this way and spin it until it demounts. And then the same thing to reapply it. Hook it up here, start it down here and wrap it around until it re-centers uh, itself, okay? Uh, if for whatever reason your belt's not tracking straight. So here's some more information on the belt. But if your belt's not tracking straight when you look down it with one eye, these should all be aligned. There's uh, screws here. So there's a screw here, there's a screw here, and then there's some back here. And basically all you got to do is move this in and out this whole motor and get this belt aligned correctly. Okay, so to replace these cooler pads, all you got to do is right here I'm in the shade or I'm shading the area but here we go so you just pull up pull out this way and pull up so as you can see they're kind of facing inward okay same thing with this one it's facing this way so you got to pull it out at the angle that it's facing so pull out this way and then up and then now this could cam out of the way okay just like that and then you repeat it for all of them. So pull down and up and then for the top one, you pull up and up and now pull it all out, so. Be careful because these are sharp and they're a pain in the butt to put on and take off. So that's why I don't do both sides. I just... So the new cooler pad, of course they're rectangles so make sure you have the width and the height in the right spot. I like to put this uh little tag down at the bottom just because the water is going to trickle down from the top down and i don't need it hitting that and splashing out so all you got to do for this is make sure you uh tuck it in underneath these corners and push them down in here like that and seat them all the way in including this side make sure you tuck it down underneath this little flange all the way around so when applying these don't be afraid to pull up on the center of this like this so that way you could manipulate the ends okay so pull up on the center piece and then use your other hand to finesse these ends in just because they're gonna have a little bit of bow to them and this piece here on this side might be bent in causing it to have uh more length and it might be hard to get it in so try to pull up in the center and then you're able to finesse the ends in. another thing is um checking these oil cups here all you got to do is flip this up and drop some oil in there till it fills up there's check all the way around on this side the other side and then up in here uh there might even be a red plug where you got to pull it uh, by the motor to oil that as well Okay, so depending on your brand of swamp cooler that you have, check those things to make sure that they're ready to go. Make sure your whirly birds as well are moving, okay? Because as you can see, that one's broke and all I did was set it down and put a zip tie on it. Um, that's gonna extract air out of your attic, all that hot air, okay? And if you want your house to stay cool, you want all that hot air to get out of your attic because that will also transmit into heating up your home. So that one needs to be fixed and replaced, just like the neighbors. Theirs are also broke uh, from the last, this last winter or these last couple of months. Um, we've had some severe winds and kind of just destroyed the whirlybirds, spun them too fast and broke the internal metal parts. You're gonna have two sides to this um, setup. So you have a smooth side, and then you have a side where they use to staple. I recommend putting this facing the panel side, just because the panel's uh, fully encapsulated, and it'll keep that from coming apart. 
um, and then putting the smooth side, the nice side, facing these ribs just because they have less support. So another thing you could do is if for whatever reason you break this, you could use a sprinkler riser like this, put some Teflon on it, and then it'll screw down in there. But do that after you blow all this stuff out with water to clean it all out first. Um, so this is your float. This is what turns on and off uh, your water flow. So of course you got to turn it on first. Uh, after you winterize it, you'll make sure it's off. Uh, but this one here in particular, all you got to do to adjust how high you want the water to flow is twist this um, float here. So you could twist it like that and it'll shut off right away when the water hits it. If you want a little bit more, you just turn it about like that. If you want a lot, then you turn it like that. So that way uh, it lifts up higher before it turns it off. Um, if for whatever reason you buy one and this is too long, uh, what you could also do is bend it in the center to adjust it where you want to start. And then you could turn the float to turn this on and off. So if for whatever reason you have a lot of rust um, and your paint's starting to peel, that rust could lead to uh, water leaks. Uh, you could buy some sealant where you could uh, scrape away the rust like with the uh, metal uh, wire metal brush, scrape away some of the rust and then apply that just to patch it. Just remember it's not going to last forever and you might end up having uh, to replace the entire cooler. Uh, you could even try tar, like what you use for the roof stuff. You could put it in there just to like save your cooler for the season until you're able to replace it. But just remember, if it's rusted, uh, there's a potential you would need to replace the entire cooler just because you're gonna be losing so much water. So your typical swamp cooler will last you maybe about eight years. Um, you'll start getting rust like this after a couple of years especially because the bolts are just zinc plated they're not stainless or anything um, and the paint jobs are not the greatest they're um, mediocre um, they're not a heavy heavy paint so the water will eventually get to it and start bubbling it like it did in the corner so expect about five to eight years out of your swamp coolers uh, before you're going to have to patch it or replace it so I help aided uh, the fill of flow increase by just using the water hose, filling the majority of it up and then letting this uh, trickle its way to completion just because you want to make sure that this float is at the proper level and the water is not going to overflow. Okay, so if this goes down, of course it flows faster. If it lifts up, it shuts it off. Before covering this whole thing up, what you need to do is turn it on from the inside. Uh, you could use pump only and you don't have to run the whole thing, just pump only and make sure you're feeding water through your tubes uh, before sealing it up and finishing the process. So this is the flow you should be getting in the troughs, pouring down in those troughs. If you're not getting the right proper flow, undo it here and blow compressed air through to blow out any debris in the hose. Um, or you can run water straight through it and try to blow it out that way or in reverse, just undo it from this area so nothing clogs up your motor. That's gonna complete today's video on how to winterize slash uh, get your uh, swamp cooler ready for the summer. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you wanna see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future, consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.